Hello and welcome to The Good, The Scars and The Rugby brought to you by Vodafone. We have all just about screeched in here. It's been a very big weekend. I was in Cardiff uh, along with the big Good Scars and The Rugby banner wall. I mean, how fancy is that thing? If you didn't see it yet, go look on our Instagram. Um, and Alicia Butchers and Donna Rose. And we did a little hospitality work. The first time ever in Cardiff before a women's test match. A beautiful occasion there. Uh, my two co-pilots on the project were up north for a big old... I mean, it felt like a leaving do, but there was also quite a bit of rugby in between. Ten tries and, you know, lots of other stuff. Um, and then at the end of that game when asked about the farewell of the absolutely inimitable Sarah Hunter, Party Packer, as she's known on the show, <laughs> said it's going to be a quiet one for the team, but Santa should get mortal. <laughs> <laughs> and lucky for her, two of her best mates are injured and they apparently were available to get mortal too. So we welcome to the show a former World Player of the Year, England's former captain, She's the one who lifted the World mm. Cup, led England to a 30-match unbeaten run, which surely makes them the best team in the sport ever. Well, I'm, I don't know. I'm asking for a friend. Um, and she's won 10 Six Nations Championships, nine of them Grand Slams. I nicked that off you, by the way, Mo, since making her debut in 07. Did you go mortal? Not full mortal. Not Geordie mortal. <laughs> <laughs> what does Geordie mortal look like? Like... Like, you probably have to be carried home. <laughs> <laughs> have you never seen Geordie Shaw, mate? <laughs> yeah, why I yeah. love it. <laughs> <laughs> Did that work? <laughs> well, I mean, Skaz isn't going to carry you. So she can hardly carry herself on her crutches. <laughs> yeah. So no, I managed to take myself to bed um, and get up the next morning. So not, not crazy, crazy. Just nice. Okay, give us the real goss. What happened? Tell us about it. No, it was just really nice. We went back to the girls' hotel um, where all Santa's family and friends had also congregated. Obviously, some of the girls stuck around. And then they slowly just started meandering off. And then about half past three in the morning, it was me, Sense, Mo, Danny, uh, Ollie, Perry, and then three of your school friends, wasn't it, left? And we, <laughs> Mo came up with this good idea. We'd, the bar had well <laughs> shut. It long gone. So Santa tottled off halfway through the night to get all some champagne and some, you know, bottles that she'd been given throughout the throughout came the day. Came in handy when the bar shut. Yeah, so got cracked those open. And then Mo came up with a game of, we have to go around and tell our favourite story about Santa and raise a glass. So then we all went around and told our favourite story These about Santa. These favourite stories were not like, <laughs> not, they were like the most embarrassing stories <laughs> each one could think of me. Uh, I felt like I was on some sort of Hindu. <laughs> It was good though. Some it sort of really Hindu. Yeah. None of them rugby related either, were they? No. Not really. So <laughs> like, like your 21st, but with more drinks. Yeah, there was one about your 18th actually. <laughs> yeah. No, it was it was really wholesome, wasn't it? I think um, the thing was that we just wanted to do whatever Santa wanted to do that night. So it was so, super important, but we didn't realise that Santa wanted to stay up till half past three in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just add, the clocks did go forward. So yeah, technically, no, it was true. only half past two. No, it was lush. It was so nice. You know you're over 30 when you're going, well, technically you're <laughs> over 30. And you're just claiming it because yeah. you're dragging your body for every, yeah, every minute after midnight. It's like, oh. I definitely paid for it yesterday, that's for sure. <laughs> but can we just discuss the queen that Sarah Hunter is? So all of these accolades, everything that we've heard about her this week. So we're there um, having a few drinks, whatever. Then she goes, oh, guys, I've got um, a presentation tomorrow morning. And we were like, Sorry, what? She was like, yeah, some um, some rugby club have asked me to go and present this award that they've named after me. So she's just retired from international sport. The biggest, greatest send off we've ever seen in our entire life. Next morning, after a half, two, three, get uh, like leave from the party, she goes and presents an award. And I just think that sums her up. Oh my goodness. Yeah. But can I also ask, did you get there on time? Oh, because, <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah. because we came back to pick our car up and then as we were driving out, we were like, oh, there's Santa. And then we looked at the clock and we were like, did she, did she say she was presenting that at 11? And it was 11.06. <laughs> <laughs> Might have been a little bit late. <laughs> I got there. Came oh. screaming in there. <laughs> yeah. But no one was going to leave before they had you there. So no, it's exactly. Fine. Like it, I think it worked out better for them and me being a bit later, you know. <laughs> How many of these did you catch? Uh, did you pick up on the way? So I didn't pick any up, but I um, 
went back to my mum and dad's yesterday for a, a Sunday roast and my mum like popped out and then came back with a pile of the papers. I think she'd <laughs> literally been in the shop going through everyone to see if there was a photo or something written up and brought them back so she could keep for, for memories, I think. If you're Very listening cute. to the podcast, I'm hold, holding up the beautiful The Observer Sport that has the most spectacular photo. Sarah Hunter, right, celebrates with Tatiana Hurd after England's fourth try. Standing ovation. Ah. That's beautiful. It is really nice. It's not, I was like, I, I wasn't going to get a try, so I might as well get in on the celebration. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is not even a World Cup. I mean, it's not like you've even won the Six Nations yet. Yet. Yeah. Um, for it to be on the on the Observer Sport. But I think it wouldn't happen for many people, if any. And I think it probably... I don't think it would. You can pull faces all you like, <laughs> Sarah Hunter. But I think... You listed off all the things she's achieved pre at the beginning of the show, um, and I don't think it would happen for many, if any. Um, and we we spoke about it. Mo and I spent a long time in the car together over the weekend. I don't know why you said it like that, but okay, we'll move past that quickly. <laughs> Did you roll your eyes? Yeah, she, yeah. She, so far back, up? I can see. <laughs> Carry on. Your point. Was. I don't even know where I was going yeah. with that. I think we just spoke Did a lot about obviously how much she's given to the game, the occasion. It just couldn't have been more perfect. But as I say, it's not going to happen every time someone retires. So it was almost more perfect because of that. I don't think I've ever witnessed anything like that. Like genuinely, for people that weren't there, I think the videos that have done the rounds, I don't think it does it justice at all. It was absolutely insane. Like they literally, you could see people almost taking their bibs off and then sitting back down because every time something's, uh, I'm going to tell you about it. It was amazing. <laughs> but every time Suns was like anywhere near the 22, we were like, score, Santa! Like <laughs> me, me, Abby Ward and Hannah Bottom were absolutely loving it. We were like, give it to Santa! Every time somebody was anywhere near the try line. Anyway, a few people looked like they were coming on a bit earlier and we were like, no, you can't do it now th until the play's the other side of the field. Like, you can't do it now, you can't do it now. They set up for a kickoff. So Suns Just to clarify, gone. you weren't giving that message to mids. No, no, just no, so no, no. In case yeah. anyone's confused. No, yeah, but we were we were very animated <laughs> in the stands around the friends and family. He could hear her. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> but I think he sensed it as well. And basically they went to um, set up for the kickoff. So Suns is far side to the bench from where everyone was. And then the announcer just comes on. So bear in mind, Scotland can take this kickoff whenever they want. Bless Meryl Smith. She just held the ball. And he was like, please give it up for Sarah Hunter. And this is like a sub announcement. And everyone was just on their feet, roaring, going mental. And as Santi came off, and it was just incredible. Like the whole of the Scottish team clapping. We were in fr sat just behind the Scottish bench, like loads of them on their feet. It was just insane but i genuinely don't think that clip did it justice do you know the bit that got me was post game i think you everyone was shaking hands and hugs and i think Suns was doing an interview and i looked around the stand you're in front of i'd argue not one single person had left the big stand again hardly anybody had left they'd just come down to the barrier nobody left until almost you'd finished speaking um and you know so often you see people just pouring out as soon as that final whistle's gone especially a game where England have won reasonably convincingly they, they knew what the ending was going to be but not one person left until Suns had basically given it another big one my mum had probably paid them all to stay yeah. there. <laughs> I was going to say weren't they all your the family <laughs> well, how many of them were your family uh, yeah exactly <laughs> probably nah they um, <laughs> I, I, when I'd finished everything and it, I was right it was incredible like genuinely could not have wished for um, like a better moment or a better day. In fact, everything about it. But um, I did get a little bit awkward. I was like, got a bit shy by the end of it. So I, I, I jogged off at the end because I was like, oh, this is too much now. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Um, but when I done all the interviews, I was like, I best go and say hello to my family, you know? And I thought they would have come down because they always normally come down, but they'd been in this box all day. Um, in hospitality and I looked up and they were still there and I'm like waving to them I'm like they're yeah, hammered I, yeah <laughs> are you actually gonna come down and see me just, they're just happy to be in there like enjoying themselves Aww. they did make it down eventually but it took them a little while so good one of my favorite moments as well post-match um amy and Berner yeah um put center on the shoulders and carry her across and then i think was it the media manager yeah. was like oh do you mind just walking her across to the press <laughs> it must have been a 50 minute a 50 meter walk and the, the opposite girls, side of the pitch and it? then calf started waving at her center was genuinely <laughs> giving the royal way from the top of their shoulders as the girls were getting further and further into the ground <laughs> but like on that because i had a subsuit on oh. it was really shiny so they i don't know if you saw the 
them tried to get me up in the first place. It was so awkward. I was like all <laughs> over the place. And then I so obviously started like waving to people. But then as they started going further and further down, I had to cling on because I was like, I am literally going to fall off in a minute. And I, Amy's like literally hanging on for dear life. And the woman's like, just a bit further. I was like, <laughs> I can't get down and walk. <laughs> I literally watched Aww. the clip of that and it made me intensely uncomfortable because they they were like your one leg was yeah. here. The fact that you didn't dislocate a hip in the process is a small my miracle. My dad did think that. He was like, oh my God, what are they doing to her? I was like, don't drop her. I mean, I know she doesn't need I'm to be able now. to run yeah. now, but let's not break her <laughs> yeah. just yet. She has to have a big celebration tonight. Yeah. But that's, I mean, that moment um, for the sport I feel like speaks such volumes. The fact that you could have that at home and that people came out and took ownership of it in the way that they did. Because even if it was just your team and the Scottish girls clapping you off, it would have been a momentous moment, objectively, because of what you've done. But seeing the way that your community, and it is your community, come, came out for you is just, that was so beautiful. It, honestly, I genuinely, when you, when I thought about finishing in Newcastle and made that decision, I was like, it's going to be really special. And I just genuinely didn't think it, it was going to be like it was on Saturday. And I don't think I've stopped smiling since, you know, just being there, the feeling, the atmosphere. And yeah, just it was overwhelming. And the fact that like that support and that send off was better than I could ever have imagined. And I feel so incredibly lucky that I've I've got to do it on my own terms in a place that's like so special to me that like it's where it all started to come full circle and to have the day that it ended up being like it just I think it's still sinking in like, I genuinely don't think it's like actually like set in about just how special it was. Did you get more nervous the morning because obviously like sometimes depending on the, the magnitude of the game stuff nerves fluctuate no. but was it like no nerves because you were like, I know this is it, or were you like crapping yourself? No, nerves are fine. I, so I was, you guys are brilliant. So <laughs> I, my mum sent me a message and it was the most wonderful message, but I just got like so emotional about it. I was literally like sat on my bed and Marley at this point had, had gone out, so she had no idea what was going on. And then I think I texted you being like, I've got all these cards, I've got all the, and like my phone literally just was like pinging. And I was like, do I read them? Do I not read them? I was like, should I reply to people? Should I not reply to people? And I was like, if you can tell, I'm very indecisive. <laughs> and a bit of an overthinker. An overthinker. Okay. Should I retire? Should I not retire? Yeah, <laughs> no. Oh, I've gone through that. <laughs> it took me about three months to get to the point that I was going to decide. But I just didn't want people to think that I hadn't acknowledged them. I was like ungrateful at the thought of, what they'd done for me. So I text mum being like, what should I do? She said, can I have some advice? And I said, can I ring you? Yeah. <laughs> so we had a little conversation, but genuinely she was worried that she would come across badly if she didn't reply to everyone on the moment of like the biggest occasion ever. And yeah, I just can't sum this girl up. She said to me earlier as well, um, that basically she's gone through all of Instagram because obviously they disappear. She's written thank you to everybody. So every post you've seen that's gone out on Sarah Hunter's <laughs> Instagram, she has personally written thank you. And I went, oh, mate, that's so lovely. I said, did you copy and paste thank you? And she was like, nah. <laughs> Absolute shocker. You typed this it girl. out. Time. Every time. <laughs> every time. I know. I didn't think. I just Handwritten got with rhythm. love. Every so any of you that have got a message, handwritten by lo with love from this girl. Um, but on the getting back to the nerves bit, um, the thing that actually got me into a really good headspace was your two car carpool karaoke. I was literally <laughs> like, like genuinely, because I was a bit like, not nervous, but emotional. And I was, I was feeling a bit emotionally drained. Like most of the was these two obviously on their way to the game, just like singing their heart out. And I was like, that was- Which one did she send you? Cause we did both. quite a few. Oh, she did <laughs> two. Oh. She sent me two. We huh? went, um, Westlife I, Better Man. Yeah, Better Man. A bit more ballady. Yeah. Mm. And Skaz is Skaz's favourite. She I've got a playlist called Skaz's Type and it's basically like boy bands. <laughs> Loves it. Um Better Man and I uh, what is it? We always get it wrong. Savage Garden. Savage Garden. Truly Madly Deeply. No, no we always play that first, but it's the one that's like Chicken Cherry Cola. That one. You can ask them to do it now if you want. Can you just sing it for us? They were like 
proper instinct but that actually got me into a really good headspace and then after that when i knew i didn't have to read my messages from that moment on i was just like i'm just gonna enjoy it like literally loving life i want yeah. you i you know go. if i need <laughs> you I, Ooh, i'm dying to find out i don't know what happened there <laughs> <laughs> normally better than that <laughs> i'm so glad you carried that on <laughs> cut it cut it let's let it <laughs> Oh, this is oh, so man. good, guys. But to be yeah, fair, that, that was, was all we wanted. That was your intention. Yeah, yeah, genuinely. I even enjoyed warming up. I was just like, what? what is this? And we played the song. Um, do you know what? I've seen that photo of your A-skips. For those who oh, don't goodness. know, A-skips is like a high knee run. Highest knees I've ever seen in my life, Sonny. I was springing. I was springing. <laughs> I was literally like bouncing on life. Yeah. But that was you the whole game as well. Yeah. Loved it. I kept on watching you thinking, why is she stopping now? I can't <laughs> agree more. Please come back. Yeah. Please don't go. No. It's, it's, I think, I also knew I wasn't going to go through to 2025. So it's got to happen sometime. And then, yeah, I just thought, like, this would be the most perfect way to end. And it was, like, beyond what I thought it would be. And I feel like there's always part of you that you want to finish when you're in a reasonable place where you're not too injured and your body's not too broken um that you can walk off the pitch and you can look back and be like yeah i finished at a good time i, I didn't want to be someone that kind of just dwindles out and sort of performances stop like happening and things so yeah i would hate to retire after that <laughs> <laughs> yeah well we Stuart, for? No, Stuart Hogg has tried i think he's <laughs> he's in the light i genuinely think he's seen sarah Hunter send off this weekend and he's been like I want a bit of that. <laughs> so he's like, right, she can have Sunday. It's Monday, I'm announcing. Yeah. And here we go. <laughs> he's about give, to he's giving himself a five-month run-in, <laughs> that guy. Every oh. game he's expected <laughs> to be clapped off. Now I know. Trust me to bring that. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> no, it is incredible. I don't think there'll ever be, for me, there's never going to be another one like that. I, I feel think. pretty pretty bad though, like because I'm yeah. like set the stool. Yeah. But I think you can when you're the mo like all time most capped player, women's player. Like you you can set that stool, and I don't think I don't think every retirement should be like that. Like you've yeah. truly earned that, and it's amazing. Bravo, G. <laughs> <laughs> I say bravo, you say G. <laughs> What was the word you said? Right, we, her mum, so sorry, I was totally off topic, but we were in a hotel room and um, Skaz's mum and dad just happened to be in the same hotel room. So Skaz's mum comes in the morning of the game just to say hello because I bumped into her dad downstairs getting ice for our game ready. Anyway, but side Neat note. Um, and then she comes in. As she's leaving, Skaz just went, toodle pop. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> pip, 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 sorry, pip. sorry. God, imagine getting that wrong. Toodle pip. Pip. Toodle pip. Toodle pip. To my mum as she Guess walked out. Speak. And I, like, I literally was stood there and I just like looked like stunned what's just happened. And her mum went, cheerio. I just <laughs> carried on as if it was normal. <laughs> I was dead. Oh my god! Oh. I mean, I can I can quite believe that genuinely. <laughs> Toodle pip, cheerio. <laughs> I was like, I have travelled back to the 1960s and I didn't even know about it. <laughs> and she I just outed that. a scarred family oh, tradition. The funniest <laughs> thing was after, after Mum had left, she went. Toodle pip. I went, is that what she said? <laughs> and I said, no, I didn't even realise that's I'd what said you it. said, Skaz. You said that. Your mum said cheerio. <laughs> Toodle pip. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, back to Santa. Oh, no, I'm, oh, we could, we've got yeah. more stories on Skaz. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Santa special where we rinse Skaz. This, yeah. this is the Santa special. Uh, there is a great quote on Santa that is not even about her, which is honestly out of all of the digging that producer Shira did. <laughs> I don't know where for she's this found this. episode <laughs> is this one. So Damien Moody. Oh yeah, Damien. Now, for those who don't know, coached Litchfield RFC, the Midlands club, where um, Sarah Hunter and our Scazzy. And Mo. Mo and the Moe. It's okay, don't worry. Uh, <laughs> played during... Did Damien coach you? No, he didn't. No, oh, to yeah, be fair. There you go. There played. Um, he said... Skaz makes me laugh because she doesn't swear in day-to-day -day life, Toodle Pip. <laughs> <laughs> but she swears like a trooper in the change room. 
Sarah doesn't do that. She doesn't need to. She has this gravitas around her if you meet her. One minute, she's a silly sod and it's all a cuddly toys and all that sort of stuff. She has a lovely soft side to her, but as a competitor, she drives standards. She'll tell people that isn't good enough. We need to be here. As a coach, you love that. And all I got out of that scares is that you don't have the don't gravitas. Have any gravitas. <laughs> yeah, so what what even is gravitas? <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, I, I obviously want to dispute it a little bit, whether I claim I don't swear or whether I claim Sarah Hunter does swear. Mm. Either way. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably truth in both. <laughs> truth in both. A little bit of truth on both sides of that. <laughs> I wouldn't describe you as swearing like, uh, a, tr like a trooper. No. Thank you, Mo. Okay. But the gravitas, Mo? Yeah. Well, yeah, if I knew yeah. what that word was, <laughs> then I could have an opinion. But unfortunately, we're sat here and... Um... It's somewhere between grace and authority. Ooh, what? And you don't have any of that? Well, we, I think... Oh, Savage, Damo. Yeah. <laughs> but Sarah Hunter does, like, she is the epitome of that. She's yeah. the queen She's of that. She's onomatopoeic of gra gravitas, personified. <laughs> gravitas is not onomatopoeic, is it? <laughs> Can we just start again? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> What's your definition of an No, it's like words that sound like I meant personified, I said the wrong thing. <laughs> We've lost Kaz completely. <laughs> Everyone thought this was going to be oh, a crying show. Yeah. Right. <laughs> we haven't been able to be. Gravitas personified, bang, Sarah Hunter. No, <laughs> she is that. Grace and authority in abundance, I'd say. So, grace and authority. Your captaincy style, though, I have to ask is this something that's always been this way? or have you developed it by learning from anyone and is there anyone you have closely watched and tried to emulate i think when you're you're younger you don't really know what you do and you just think it's a coin toss and like making decisions on the um, pitch i don't think you really understand like what a leadership role is and i think as you get older you think well you probably realize it's a bit more than than that and i think i've followed a lot of great captains so obviously katie daly mclean like for me was uh, a brilliant captain, uh, World Cup winning captain, um, and people like Sue Day before that, you know, um, Catherine Spencer, and they all have different leadership styles. But obviously, I followed Katie and I was like, well, I have to be like her, you know, like she's an incredible person, motivator, speaker, and does all these things really, really well. And then you kind of fall into the, the trap of not being authentic to yourself. Um, and I think I certainly realised I'm not going to be here. I can't be here. We have very different ways of, of leading. Um, and then sort of realise I've to try and be myself and people will buy into that. People will follow it and people will, will, will see who I am and how I lead. And it's OK to be different. Out of interest, how would you describe yourself as a captain? Like, what would you say your style is? What do you go after? I think um, I just want to lead by example. So I think um, I might not have all the, the right things to say at the right time, but I try to sort of set standards and behaviours that hopefully other people can see and follow and kind of be like, well, actually, that's what like I like about the leadership style of, of, of me. And I think um, that comes more naturally than, I don't know, like probably the Winston Churchill type speech. Um, yeah. What would you say? Sunders. Well, Sunders captain yeah. style. Yeah, exactly what she just said. Yeah, I find it interesting that you... Well, one, I'd like to dig out some more tapes of you trying to be Katie Daly McLean, to be <laughs> honest, because I think that would be flipping funny. Um, but I think, yeah, everyone goes on a journey with it, don't they? I think we've both been in leadership roles. Certainly when I came into the sevens, I was a little bit similar in terms of just trying to figure out what that looked like for you. But yeah, you're definitely somebody that you you kind of watch have a huge amount of respect for and then you want to follow and try and basically be be a little bit like you. I don't time everything as intently as you do on your baby G, but... Honestly, <laughs> she's the most diligent person you ever know. Like, when they say, this is your rest for the gym, so a stopwatch on, 30 seconds rest, back into the set, to the point, do you want to tell them about Can we tell the story? Yeah, so <laughs> to the point that um, santa has got this reload programme, um, had a little issue with her calf. So you take your collagen shot, and then 45 minutes later, on the clock, you've got to do, like, some ISO calf loading. So Sarah, Santa's partner was um, in the back, like measuring because they're getting an extension at the moment. And he's like, up a ladder. Was he up a ladder? Yeah. He's like, can you, um, can you just come and hold this for a second? I just need to get this measurement, obviously doing them a favour. And Santa was like, 
how long is it going to take? Because I've got two minutes left on before I've got to do my calf isos. And apparently he was like, are you joking? Are you joking me? Yeah, he wasn't that happy. I did actually go and do it. But I was on a strict, like, <laughs> basically I'd hurt my calf, which wasn't part of the plan of, like, retirement. And retiring in Newcastle. In Newcastle. It wasn't part of the plan. So I got an injury, which should have taken a bit longer. I had 17 days to turn this round. So every... And what did they tell you it would take normally? Like four to six weeks. <gasps> 17 so, days. Yeah. I've when got people really use the word hero, it's like real life. Like I got a really good medical team and SNC team who gave me a good program, but every minute which, counted. Yeah, yeah, which you literally followed to yeah. the second. Apart from that one time, <laughs> when I, I kind of was like, "Oh God, I've, I'm going to have to go and hold the ladder." <laughs> if he so was good. sitting here and I said to him, "What kind of captain are you?" What would he say? Oh, I don't know. Um, can I answer my opinion yeah. after yours? Do you want to think no, about it? No, you can go first. The most caring I've ever known, Aww. and I've genuinely, I think that's. For me, that's what sets sense apart from everybody. So to the point that biggest occasion ever, when I rang her and she was having a little meltdown the day of the game, she was actually writing Marley's 90th card. So this girl has got like pockets and pockets of cards in her bag. Every first cap gets a card. Anytime you get a milestone, so like 10, 20, 30, et cetera, caps, they got a card. Every first cap, she'd do a speech, she'd stand up and do a speech about them, about where they've come from. So the research that went into it, she'd speak to everyone, sometimes even coaches from back in the day to get information and be able to deliver an incredible thing for you to receive your red rose, which is what happens when anyone gets a first cap. But yeah, to me, like the most caring. And not just that, not just the milestones, like anything. If you get injured, if you get hurt, if she just is aware that your head's down a little bit in training or if you're a little bit uncomfortable about something, it's always the arm round, always the check-in. And to me, that's what has genuinely set you apart from anyone I've ever worked with. Oh, that's very lovely of you, Mom. It's true. <laughs> is that why you guys rehearsed your speech in the car four times? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is. We had to nail it because she does such a good job every time. And it was quite long. It wasn't one you could just ad-lib. We'd, you'd gone to town, didn't you? Yeah. You didn't we, just three, go bullet Three points. hours in a car, remember? <laughs> and you managed to do it four times. Well, yeah. we'd got loads of information, so we got the bones, and then we basically just tried to pull it together so that it was a little bit funny. It so was. It needed to be funny. So that it wasn't it just all pure emotion and love. A lot of emotion and love. A lot of also age comments in there. <laughs> yeah, Do you didn't realise how Kate many? Said to me afterwards. <laughs> she went to me afterwards, she went, you made a lot of like age digs at Suns, and we were like, yeah, no, no. She went, halfway through, I wanted to just shout, that's rich, at you two. <laughs> <laughs> I wish she had done. I wish she had done. I wouldn't have understood, so it would have been over my head anyway. <laughs> <laughs> also, the, the thing that got me were you guys, I had no idea they were coming. So Mo had been just texting me, like, um, just before shirts, and I'm like, oblivious in my own little world, I say, what's up? And came down, and then these pair were here, and I was like, what are you doing here? And it still hadn't clicked that they were like, gonna get up and talk about me. You're the perfect person to throw a surprise party to. <laughs> Honestly. You see the surprise in the passage and yeah. you go, hi. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, in one of the, um, so Liz Craig, who got her first cap, we, um, we played Wasps at um, the start of January and I hadn't realised Skaz was going to be here. So Liz did this really good show and go on Skaz and Skaz was It was all tackle. over social media. It was the one of like going viral. <laughs> Skaz never messes up. And I was like, oh, that'll be quite funny to put in, you know, as a little comment about how good Liz had done. And then literally as I was reading, <laughs> I was like, Oh, this guy's just now here. I was like, <laughs> I, was like I was like, I'm really sorry. This wasn't planned. You weren't meant to be here. And just find it out anyway. And I wasn't sure if that was worse or better because she was mugging her off behind her back of <laughs> yeah, yeah. what she was saying. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so when that happened, I was like, hmm. Yeah. Got the biggest laugh of the night. It, it did, did yeah. actually. Well, and I'm never funny either, <laughs> so I was like, I'll take that. Do you know what was so nice? Sorry, what was so nice about shirts is after Liam, so Liam's our like behind the scenes camera guy, such a great guy, amazing. But he came up to me after and he was like, um, that just feels like such a, a pure moment. Like she's just delivered four new cap speeches. It's almost like she's handing the mantle on. Now obviously she's got her cap and it's the first time that we've had names on the back of the shirts. And he was like, that just to me is just perfect. And it really was. And I was like, oh Liam, you're so good at this stuff. Keep the stars aligned. Yeah. Really does, did. does it feel like it's in a in this is where if you could leave it anywhere, 
you kind of putting the boat on the water now and it's yeah genuinely like I, I, things just happen for a reason sometimes and like sometimes i believe in it and sometimes i don't but i just for me there's like too many things from this weekend that i've just aligned to be like i'm happy to to go in and where the women's game's going as well i'm just like and i feel really at ease i woke up this morning and i genuinely wasn't like I'm going to miss going into camp tomorrow. And I think you, you never know how you're going to be. But I think for me, that just reinforces that I've made the right decision that like, I'm really like looking forward to seeing how the girls get on in the Six Nations and want to, and want and know they'll do really well. But there's, I, there wasn't a sense of waking up and going, oh, I want to go and play Italy next week, which I think is, is probably a good place for me to be in. Have you been kicked out of the WhatsApp groups yet? Uh, not yet, but I probably will do. I, I think no. I'm. I, I Save the play gonna, one, just not the all the admin one. I think I, the, it's gone. It's gone off today, and I'm like, and again, it's not a sense of like, oh, like I need to have a What's look. Or I want to, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm probably gonna do a little thanks. See ya. <laughs> Mic drop. Mic drop. <laughs> you should stay on it for media though, because you'll get the team news early. Yeah. So <laughs> you should do all your press. Like, yeah. Added yeah. value yeah. as a pandit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's a good insight actually. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll just mute it. I need to learn how to do that first. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could do it for me. Yeah, I do it for you in a minute. <laughs> Some of the naysayers would say that the current crop of players who are coming through now have no way of understanding what it's taken to get here. This is something that you guys understand in a way that no one who's coming through the ranks right now gets. Is that fair and is it true? I think they'll never understand what we've gone through because the majority of players in the group now have only ever known professional rugby. I've only ever finished school, college, university with a full-time contract where the three of us um, have all had to have a full-time job uh, whilst being uh, an England rugby player and having to be an international and having that professional mindset without the professional world to live in. And I, I think um, it, it's no fault of their, their own. I feel I think it's wonderful and great that they've got the opportunity to have um, the time that they do and the, the career that they're, they, they will go on to have and, and always be professional for them. But um, I don't think they'll ever have that full appreciation. They'll they'll probably empathise with it, but I don't think they'll ever be like, I know what it was like to, to, to go through that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I wouldn't change it. Um, I have actually really enjoyed the journey from like amateur world into professional. And I think probably because of that, I do appreciate it a lot more knowing all the challenges we had and all the early morning starts. Um, yeah, that we now don't have to have. It's the same, isn't it? Like we don't appreciate what Ish and Burnsy yeah. and, and that generation yeah. went through because yeah. we didn't live it either. Um, and I think, you know, Suns and I over the years have had many conversations when we're talking leadership stuff or whatever it might be around, you know, you can't make them understand something that they didn't live or mm. make them appreciate something that isn't what they're doing now. And, you know, trying not to be those people that are the back in our day people <laughs> yeah. mm. because it, it you, you can't do it the same as somebody who comes into a program tomorrow will still not have gone through everything that uh, Sarah Burns gone through who actually is still relatively you know young and new into the game so you have to be a bit careful that you know not to not look back but also understand that actually they haven't been through that therefore it's not their fault they don't have that appreciation and not all baggage is useful yeah yeah which is something if you're a woman who works in a male dominated environment whether you're a pilot or a surgeon or a rugby coach this is something that so many women have experienced that you have to leave your baggage at some point because it's just not always that useful it's not important to have i think a lot of ours is like uh, similar to you i'm really really glad that i lived through a <coughs> excuse me a, a non-professional era and mm. did that and trained in a different way and one because maybe when we actually have to go back to the real life we'll have <laughs> yeah. done it at some point and we're actually yeah. nine to five won't smack us in the head as much as we yeah, think it, it still might. does <laughs> 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 it still does yeah. but no I, I completely agree it's, it was tough yeah like working and we we're literally training like full-time athletes but working a full-time job as well mm. it was crazy but I agree I echo everything you've said I think they'll have their this generation 
um, will have their own challenges and won't know their what they are yet, what they have to overcome, and uh, they'll set things up for for the generations to to come. And it's just an evolution in the game at the minute because of the growth that we've we've been on. But yeah, they'll they'll have their own things to to problem solve. It's also quite refreshing as well because they almost push for stuff that potentially I wouldn't because I'm so grateful for everything we've got now. So you kind of almost don't see past that. Do you know what I mean? Whereas some of the girls are really driven in like, like Jess Breach is fantastic. Burner's fantastic at like driving those standards and asking for stuff and just challenging and like upsetting the status quo and stuff. Whereas for me, I'm not sure if I would because I'm like, oh, like, but we've come so far. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, it's a, a really fair point. And I think like even where we are in the game, I think we always have to keep keep asking 100%. and keep pushing for, for, for where it can go. Can we also keep talking about Hannah Bottomman? <laughs> so yes. good. I just spoke to Sunter about it before. She, um, Sunter was obviously chatting. I don't think she had a clue, but I'd, I'd clocked her like crawling. I looked at Gabby and Gabby, we both had like smiled as Sunter's speaking. But you obviously have no idea what camera view the camera people are on. And then for, for anyone who hasn't seen it, we're talking about the BBC clip where Sunter's um, doing a post-match chat with us in the studio and Hannah Bottomman thinking she's getting herself out of shot is crawling behind. <laughs> on all fours. <laughs> on all fours. <laughs> yeah. On all, and it's raining, so she's it's full commitment to the cause. Yeah. The weirdest thing is as well, there was so much going on in the background that she could have just walked yeah. past and no one have even been walking it. past the whole time. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's plenty of movement. She's wearing a cap and a jacket. She could have been absolutely anybody. <laughs> But the dedication to get down on all fours. <laughs> <laughs> it was the bit where she got up as if like, oh yeah, I've nailed I'm that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Brushed her knees and like walked halfway through the show, yeah. wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> she hadn't even made it fully out. <laughs> she hadn't. So Matt Roberts, who directed that game, works in my office. And he walked into the office this morning and I said to him, oh, what did you do to Hannah Bottomman? And he literally looked at me blank. He had no clue that it had happened. He went, what? And I showed him the clip and he went, Oh, I didn't even see that when it was happening. <laughs> so everyone watching it on TV had the eagle eyes. The director wasn't looking at all. I mean, he wasn't even doing her dirty. Uh, so, Hannah, that was inadvertent. Uh, that's, Apologies. That's bots all over for you, though. It's, like, priceless. Brilliant. So, good. so we had bots on the show a while ago. She's absolute, I mean, brilliant, full value with Zoe Allcroft. Um, and she is one of those characters who makes me so excited for the future. These, these characters coming through now who, have, as you say, are speaking up and doing things and just being absolute. It's a bit like that poster. Was it a little boy who held a poster up for you? There was a child in the crowd who had a poster that said, thank you, Santa, inspiring boys and girls. That's what it's all about. Jessica Hayden tweeted it. And that's the stuff that people attach to is the personalities in the game and you have been one of those beacon-like personalities that has just magnetically attracted people's good feelings it's the dimples <laughs> it's the dimples, <laughs> the dimples. What, what did you guys say in your thing though <laughs> again this was a more light-hearted no <laughs> we made a dig basically about maybe when she first got cap you couldn't quite see the dimples because her face was a little rounder than maybe it is now <laughs> honestly so for those that don't know the england rose that we wear was a tulip back in the day because it was the R F. oh my w. goodness thank you um, and it's blossomed into the rose. So as the game's gone on, we've like had now the England rose. So we made a, a joke that Santa, much like the tulip, has blossomed into <laughs> into her dimples. <laughs> Honestly, who needs enemies? We've got friends like yeah. this. <laughs> um, but it, it did it also lighten the mood. Um, but <laughs> I do think, um, I guess now that I think that's the great thing about the team. You look across um, the board and you've got so many different personalities. You've mm. got so many different people in terms of what they look like, what they sound like, what they're into, what their fashion is, everything like that. So I guess, especially for, for young girls, but young boys also, is that they look up and they can see people mm. and they can relate to them and they can say, oh, well, that's me, that's what I want to do. And I think uh, in the world that we, we live in, we, we need to have more people in society where young people can can feel accepted in the world because they are like someone else and i think 
um, within the Red Roses, like you've got great role models to, to do that. And I think allowing people's personalities to shine through is, is, is so important. Like whatever that personality might be, it might be someone like Box who's like quite loud and quite boisterous, or it might be someone that's a bit more shy and retiring. But I think it's so important to show that actually the, there's, there's something for everyone. I think the shining moment of you cutting through in a way that I haven't seen very often. I think the most comparable example to that for me would be Siakulisi was your post-match interview at the end of the final in New Zealand. Because all I got from what you were saying, and I remember I was at the Hinley Rugby Club with Kim Oliver and Ollie Perry, and we were all like, like ugly crying watching you. <laughs> Because of the sadness of the moment, but also because we could really read all of your feelings on you, there was just so much honesty and so much vulnerability. And that requires a lot of strength to just stand there complete, like with your, you know, guts hanging out going, that really hurt and you're still proud. Yeah, like I just, I think I had a few deep breaths, but I think at that moment, I just didn't want to, I didn't want to hide behind this person that comes out and be the media trained, like, oh, in the English, typically, it's, oh, well, haven't we done well? And never mind. But like to show that actually it's all right to be hurt by um, something that's just happened and to try and like let people in to know how you're feeling, how the team will be feeling. And I think um, I genuinely at the time, I, I don't really... I think I was having this out of body experience because I didn't really know what I'd said or how I said it. I think it was just pure like emotion and heart that was was being said. But I think um, like once you've had time to watch it back and um, people ask like the moments that you look back on and proud of and away from all the things that you've done rugby related, uh, like that's probably one of them to know to to somehow find some way to try and like say how we were feeling and but what the team had done and where the game was I think um is yeah something like now I've had time to reflect on it it's like uh I didn't mess that one up no you didn't mess that one up up. (laughs) that's the understatement of the century no you didn't mess that one up Big time, didn't mess yeah. that one up. I remember. I s- mean, I have done some with some of my uh, oh, notorious. Should we do not know what you're talking about? <laughs> yeah. Can we move? On? Can we move on? Because it's no, one of my no. favourite stories ever. Go on. So it's a post-match interview. There's a. We'll get this clip out on social media somewhere. Yeah. If it's done the rounds already. <laughs> full boardings behind sponsors. The whole shebang. Thinks you're in a full England kit, and she's obviously talking about itching to get going and chomping at the bit and she combines the two and says oh the girls God. were itching at the bits I know, honestly <laughs> so good <laughs> honest to god every i've never time. been allowed to let, let live it down i redeem myself though with post world cup so yeah, you did. 100%. I'll take times that, 100%. a thousand do you when you do it know that you're doing it well or are you just making it up as you go along and then afterwards go oh okay i hope that landed well yeah generally i think um with something like the World Cup, I was just, it was just coming out. I hadn't thought about anything, hadn't thought about what I wanted to say. As you're running over, yeah. you're not going, oh, I need I, to say. The only thing I was like, I was like, please don't cry on national TV. That's all I was thinking. I was like, before, um, I think Laura Jane, she did the interview and I was like, please don't be nice to me. Because if you're nice to me, I will cry. Because I had a li- we had like about 30 seconds before I went on air. And I was like, please, just... <laughs> Just don't be nice because I will burst into tears and not stop. I'm an ugly crier and I'd literally be like, oh. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's this week's, this week's um, caption and slow mo <laughs> of the facial. <laughs> Found it. <laughs> but I think that, so you guys, everyone that watched that got an insight into what we see as Sarah Hunter, which is why you've seen so much on social media this week and so many of the girls coming out and saying it because that is her, like what you said earlier about being authentic. That was you at your authentic best, like in the most hurtful moment probably of like a long time. And then you've just delivered that. And that is why we love her to pieces. Post-match interviews, you get a a raw self of somebody as well. Because there is no time to think about it. There is no time to prepare what you might say or someone tell you the questions that you might get asked because LJ's probably doing the exact same. She's having to react because it literally went down to the final play of Mm. of the game. Mm. So it it is literally somebody's raw self at that time. Um, And yeah, you absolutely crushed it. I remember standing with the girls, consoling, you know, trying to just get amongst people. And then I heard her voice and I was like, 
shit, she's having to do this on the TV right now, whereas the rest of us are sobbing and just on the ground or doing whatever it is. And I remember thinking, bloody hell. That's also so tough because you weren't there for, like you went on the pitch for that second half. Can we talk about yeah, that? No, I, yeah, no, I 100% could talk about it. Absolutely. Isn't that twice as hard? Because you couldn't play a part in, I mean, the the decisive moments. There was just nothing you could do. You just had to watch. Yeah, it was really hard. Like, I guess the decision, at, like, it was gutting to come off at half time. But like, in my head, I was like, Mitch has made the decision that he thinks is going to win the World Cup like the, and that's the best thing for the team at that time it's not about me it's not about whether I want to play or not he's genuinely made a tactical decision we've obviously lost Lydia earlier on he's thinking well what am I going to do to win the, the, the second half um, or ensure we keep winning the second half to win the game and like he's made that in that moment and like that's you back that decision because it's a team sport at the end of the day and you'll do anything to win the World Cup and if we win the World Cup it's like you don't think anything of it so you have all these thoughts and there was no thought in the second half at all that I ever thought there was going to be any other result other than we were going to win and I, Marley had come off at the stage where we we kicked a corner and I literally turned to her and I was like this is it this is our moment and like and then you're like watching it, half watching it, and then it's literally happening in slow mo, and you you've got no control over anything, and you're like, and then you can see it happening, and you're like, no. And I remember just looking away, and Amy could came and like, it'll be all right, and I'm like, it's not okay, like that's it, we're done, it, it'll not be okay. And then the first thing after that was like, I just wanted to get on the pitch, because I think you have that sort of process of of probably a bit longer than being in the moment to be like right I just want to get to the team and make sure everyone's all right um and yeah just make sure that actually we, we we stick together and you you pick the people up that have literally like dropped to the floor and like unfortunately like both of us all of us know that um what it feels like to lose a world cup so you have an insight of what people are naturally already feeling and you want to you just want to try and take that pain away from them or to let them know it, it, it'll be okay and just you'll you'll be there for them and that was the first instant I like I I felt or I didn't feel all right I was devastated absolutely devastated but I had more of a desire to go in make sure everyone was all right then to kind of deal with I was like I can deal with myself later but I need to go and make sure the team's all right oh my goodness that so yes she puts everyone first but also the team first that is you're just incredible. I couldn't. I couldn't put everyone else first. Yeah, <laughs> I think <laughs> I was an early feeling really sorry for myself <laughs> that I'd gotten up so bloody early, <laughs> and then sat there and did this Q and A, and we just all cried so much, and it was so sad. <laughs> there was a lot of crying. I just honestly, I think the toughest bit is I think when we had to stand and you have to watch New Zealand get it, and like fair play, they they won it. They they did well. They've the way they turned around their performance in what less than what mm. six months to to go and win the competition, like you, you can never take that away from them. But it doesn't make it any easier having to stand and watch them get what you so desperately, desperately mm. want. That's painful. Yeah, and you've been on the other side of it, <clears throat> which I think is really important. You know what it feels like to have that experience, which is re a really interesting contrast huge contrast it's like literally the the biggest contrast you can have and I guess I feel really fortunate that obviously now finishing that we can say like we we have won a world cup and we have been world champions and there's there's a lot of people in England who like haven't and they'll always have that part of their career missing and I think it probably now makes that that gold medal shine a, a little bit brighter knowing that like for me that that that's going to be it hopefully for the two people sat next to me that there'll be one in 2025 to, to go and win but yeah um that I think it does make it even more special knowing that like you've done it you've got it and there isn't going to be another opportunity to to try and go and get another one and it's rare yeah really rare and I think it also like m makes it even more like sort of it makes you realize more that it's even harder like World Cup wins don't come easy. So actually having one 
makes it even even more special knowing that it's it is rare and not everyone gets the wonderful opportunity to say that they are a world champion where's the middle where is the medal? Where is the medal? It's in her bag outside. She bought the 10 she, Are you Six wearing Nations it under your shirt now? Okay. <laughs> her World Cup yeah. winning medal. I think, actually... It, and her MBE. <laughs> it's actually out on the side, but it's only out on the side because when we did the um, documentary in the, the summer, as they do, they like to like oh. set things up. It's outrageous when they do that, isn't it? <laughs> this girl would not want to get her medals out and show no. anyone. Don't Sorry. let the truth get in the way of a good story. <laughs> so, so I moved to Loughra <laughs> in 2017 <laughs> from Bath. <laughs> And I had one box that I hadn't unpacked and it was a box with like all my medals in. So, and then I moved it. And then we moved last year, 2022, it was like five years. And this box still hadn't been unpacked. <laughs> The way it gets better. And then Go so on. when the documentary people were like, oh, can we come to your house? And they were like, oh, well, I was like, well, yeah, I've just moved in. And there's still one box that's not unpacked. They were like, oh, what's in it? And I was like, oh, my, my medals, my rugby memorabilia. They're like, brilliant. So literally, they made me unpack this box one at a time, talk about the medals <laughs> and put it out on the shelf. Um, and they've been out ever since. But Nathan's like, you know, they, they can't stay there. <laughs> He's like, but he not... can't be the person who puts them yeah, away. No, he wouldn't be. Yeah. I have to put them. I have to find a different place for them. But it's like a little shrine of uh, Will Cut. Yeah, yeah. Very we similar. have a little shrine yeah. here. I mean, we could just take custody for a short while. <laughs> yeah. But Since no. it was viewing, she came back into camp and was like, "Guess what I had to do this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> Can you believe it? <laughs> yes, yeah, sons, yeah. for the shot. Remember, you're a TV <laughs> pundit now. Yeah, and they used one clip, which was of me crying over the 2017 World Cup. <laughs> After all that, I've got, got all of that. Out. How long were you filming for? Uh, hours. Cutting room floors are littered with <laughs> yeah. many, many gold moments. Yeah. I am brutal and ripped as them out. As soon as I cried, I was like, oh, well, I know what's going in the shot. Oh, no. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. So um, speaking of things that go into the shot, if uh, we had to pick a moment, um, let's say attach a word to the feeling of the weekend, because it was a big weekend. I feel like we got a lot you to start You didn't tell me it had to be a with. feeling. Well, what? before we get to the rest Yours of it, be a feeling? Honda has asked us to give a one word review of the weekend's action. So everyone's got their little clipboards. Everyone's had a Sharpie. So flip your clipboard around, say the word and explain to us why you select this word. Let's start with, uh, what was that word that uh, your friend from the 60s used? Toodly dip? Toodle pip. <laughs> Toodle pip. Toodly dip. <laughs> Don't make up oh, words. Don't make up words, Elma. Don't make up words. Toodly dip. Yeah. Guess yeah. what, Scars? Emily Toodle pip Scarrett <laughs> is going to show us the word of the weekend. Toodly dip. I went Santa. Has to be. I think the whole thing, we've spoken so much about it. It was unbelievable and fitting of the very best. So I know there's some other games, but <laughs> I mean, yeah. Do you want to go? I, yeah, I'll go. Right. Um, incredible. Aww. Like genuinely, like beyond my wildest dreams and imaginations of what I could ever have asked for. All my favourite people were in one place and made the day so incredibly special that genuinely, like, um, yeah, it was just the, the best I could have ever asked for. Oh. Gamma. Monumentous. <laughs> <laughs> I told you she lose her head. <laughs> Gaz, God. So, just like you, Skaz, I joined two words together. <laughs> do you, do you it's know, monumental. It's, it's actually the word, word, though, isn't it? Is do you word? know this is the word you were saying the entire time? No, I was trying journey. to say monumental. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you I'm kept saying this word. <laughs> oh, did I? Yeah. <laughs> that's because why I, came I was up like, then. just say momentous, because that's basically what you're saying, but yeah. you'd written down Mon monumental. Yeah. And so then you just kept coming yeah. out with just <laughs> versions of it. <laughs> monumental. This is a new word that personifies Santa. Monumental. Oh, I thought it was O-U-S. I thought it was O-U, yeah. No, Guys, it's not a word. It's two words. <laughs> it's monumental but and I, momentous. Yeah, but if you were going to join, you'd still put the O-U-S at the oh, end. Oh, I understand. <laughs> 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 Anywho. I love it. Well, effectively, monumental. the whole weekend 
record crowd down in Wales, Sarah Hunter and all that that brought, everything about it was just monumentous. So yeah, brilliant. Monumental. Sorry, can we just go back to, I know we keep talking about it, when we did Sunter's pre-shirt speech. So we were in the car and <laughs> I we feel had... I really stitched up about this, had, by the way, Bob. We had the privilege of being in the car and reading it. I was driving, so I didn't really get as much practice as Mo. <laughs> Mo kept reading it, kept reading it, kept reading it. <laughs> Every single time uh, she mucked up this word, right? And then in the in the shirt presentation... Messed up the word. Messed up the word. So then I got back in the car after and I was like, oh, Skaza, I'm really gutted that I messed that word up. And she went... Yeah, to be honest, I don't really know why you kept go- trying to go with it. You should have just changed it at the time. And I was like, thanks for telling me. <laughs> like, <laughs> cheers, brother. Cheers, brother. <laughs> there we go. But my, here's uh, yours. my weekend word and review is not a word. I'm cheating. It's many words. That's the Many crowd. souls in Wales, 4,962 people, a record crowd for a Wales women's home fixture. And apparently, almost twice as many will be there when England head to oh, wow. Already sold. That's the rumour. Amazing. That's what I'm hearing. Oh, that's really cool. So I'm all for the numbers. 4,960. What's the Twickenham update? The Twickenham update, I've heard rumours of cracking 40. What was it's the number in New Zealand? It's got to be 42,000 something so, and something. Yeah. I was going to say New Zealand we, was the, the final of Rugby World Cup 21. I have the number here. Give me a moment. Four, five... What is it? Seven nine. Four two five seven nine. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it's your really so hard. Do you know what? I she really so hard. nailed that one. It's okay. <laughs> I love that you try. I tried. Oh. I was just filling four thousand. Four, four, four five. I I've literally said it twenty times. Four thousand two hundred. Forty two. <laughs> The gift that keeps on giving. Take me home. <laughs> what I can tell you is that Mo was on top form oh. when we took Honda's motor cars, motor vehicles out, even though we blindfolded people and we made you guys drive with milk. So if you have not watched this feature, um, Mo was there dragging James Haskell, which is worth watching just for that. Uh, but make sure that uh, you go watch uh, our day out with the GBR boys uh, in two Honda HRVs. We went head to head. And surprise, Skaz won. <laughs> oh, shock. Excuse me, we were a team. <laughs> oh, are we here? <laughs> we were a team. We were a team. It was literally was there Skaz well. and Mo <laughs> versus <laughs> the boys. Yes, okay. <laughs> Who Skaz, was driving? Nice, Skaz. Well played, mate. <laughs> was Skaz driving? No, it was... A, it, to show. be fair, Skaz did nail it, didn't she? Have you not seen it? Basically, no, it's Friend fine you have pod, it. You're going to go watch it. We're going to get an extra viewing number. Um... <laughs> Basically, she reversed. So we had to do this thing where you drove around and had the, a ball on the top of the car. So the boys like just had a little paper cut up. We took a tee, got a little heads up, so we got a kicking tee. And Skaz went the whole way and then reversed back through. Like the audacity, it was amazing. Such a show off. Like a proper... It was so she good. She grew up driving a tractor though, yeah. so she should be good at it. So driving an HRV, I mean, Easy. hello. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, make sure you go watch that. If Mo hasn't sold it well enough for you, just her dragging James Haskell is honestly worth it. <laughs> um, we had a lovely live show out there, and I think I need to put in an application to the Principality Stadium uh, to let us return, because we would like to fill up the Riverside Terrace. Yes, please. We did a whole tour. Um, I went into the change rooms and really got myself into the zone. There was a many incriminating videos of me doing things that videos is are good. It's a little embarrassing. I know, Skaz. I've seen you in the shirt. It's embarrassing. But there we are. Flames and... I didn't even say that. <laughs> I mean, just an athlete. That's what I am. A humble athlete trying to make a contribution to the team. Uh, but the rugby was phenomenal. And Wales kicked the tournament off in such style. I know England got a perfect 10. It's... I mean, that's unbeatable and the perfect send off for Sarah Hunter. <laughs> uh, but I would like us to just have a little little moment for the girls in red because they put on a massive show. Did you catch the game? Uh, we were in kind of the pre-game bit mm. and we had it on in the background, but we only started watching it at half time. We were like, oh, what's the score? What's the score? So there's like myself, Maggie, Katie Mack. Um, Name drops. And a few. <laughs> <laughs> Gabby Logan. And a few oh. others. Didn't say, didn't say her. Did I? Her and a be- <laughs> bestie Gabby. Yeah. yeah. And we um, 
we checked the score and it was was it twenty six nil at half time, twenty five nil at half time something, which I think we were all not surprised at, but surprised at. Does that make any sense? Impressed you know by. What I mean, yeah, I think so. Um, and obviously, perhaps Wales weren't able to kick on in the second half as much as maybe they would have liked to. Ireland obviously come back into it a little bit, but I think yeah, really strong start from Wales. And you know, we spoke about it last week, didn't we? That they're probably another year into the contracts compared to some of the other teams. So they've got a bit more perhaps behind them and yeah, started really strong. And also the way that they're running their contracts, I think for me is a big one. So obviously 11 of that squad were at, at GH. So wow. here we are. She's saying um, Gloucester Hartbury, have I sent you No, I'm not. <laughs> but what I'm saying is um, they are really good at releasing the girls. So if they're not in the match day squad, they actually go into training on the Friday. So if they don't get game time, they're actually in, like the contracted girls are in training, doing physio, doing rehab, whatever that is. And then they get released back to club. And I think just the way that they're working it is kind of, well for us certainly, I know that it's a lot further for someone like a George Evans has got to go to Saracens and back, but it works for our club at the moment. It definitely works. And the girls were brilliant. Like, it was great to see, like my heart goes out to obviously the Irish girls, like Neve and Sam on the other side of that, but like Sis getting player of the match and her little emotional, oh, that was so amazing. oh just the clip of her, like honestly she's golden, she is such a lush human. Karen Lake, first game of rugby she's played in ages and that little fen to hit up Hannah Jones on the, on the little pop line. It's just, it's great to see the girls doing so well and they're really loving it. You can see that they're really enjoying their time there. I think you mentioned the post-match everyone in the huddle, all, all staff, all players, and then the first cap. Kate Williams. Yeah, for Kate, Aww. which is just class. I think as well, they've been through their fair share of the shite, yeah. haven't they? So I think actually to see them come out, not the other side, but a little bit, and actually enjoying some you know, good time together, translating to actually results and performances on the field. Obviously, we were only one game in, but I think that's also really nice to have seen a team struggle through a bit, but actually come out the other side. Yeah. And... Can we have a moment for Donna Rose? I mean, the fact that she's injured is disappointing because obviously we'd love to see her play. There were two upsides to this though. One was Cecilia Tuipulotu because, oh my goodness, she is very scary to be watching. I'm so glad she will never run at me <laughs> with a ball in her hands because I wouldn't <laughs> be able to survive that. And secondly, that we got Donna for our little hospitality chat. She told us about Gwen Crabbe's match day here being quite a do and how much they drag Gwen for her match day do here because they say she does her hair um, and it looks like she's going to go get married. It was also nice just to see support tweeted. Billy Vunipola tweeted the next big thing. Caps. Yes, please. Um, and Carbon Tuipulatu, her cousin who plays for Scarlet's tweeted, Cause on fire and a flame emoji Aww. about Cecilia Tuipulatu. So that was great. Kira Bevan. Oh, I mean, very good. Love that. Love that energy. Uh, full on scrap continues without <laughs> a nine. Next thing, she's in there, rejoins the attacks, nails a 50 22. What's Kira like to play against? I really enjoy our little battles. I think she's she's just a character. What you see on the pitch playing for Wales or Bristol, it never changes. She's always like full of energy, full of beans. Um, yeah, we have we have a good relationship. I do, I really enjoy Kira. Like we'll we'll like speak about how we play, like different bits, and we've always kind of had each other's backs through our careers. So I've got quite a nice relationship with her. What about when you get on the pitch, though? I quite like it. I quite like the little scraps. <laughs> She's not as bad. <laughs> Alex Callender, another one, tried to un un like undoes my laces as I'm bent down, putting the ball into the scrum because obviously she's on the flank. So for me, Kira's fine. Kira's nothing. Yeah, she's not nothing. She's a, she's a talented athlete, but we I feel like we have a good battle whenever we play, and I enjoy that. Does she undoes your laces? Undoes, yeah. Alex Callender. <laughs> <laughs> like, I could, could you imagine me Sorry, trying to undo Crixie so Grammar? You know, <laughs> undo, undo. <laughs> She undoes my laces. Undoes yeah, and... it's so annoying. But I tried to pull her scrunchie out because I got really mad. <laughs> that just escalated. So, yeah, so like she's, I'm there bent down trying to put this ball in the scrum. She's undone my lace and I was just really mad. I was like, that's such a childish oh, thing to do. So you so pulled the scrunchie out. <laughs> so I went to grab her hair and pull her scrunchie out. And then I was like, shit, I might get cited for this because it looks <laughs> like I'm trying to pull her hair. So then I, I apologised straight away. <laughs> Which you're putting me, it back in her hair. Yeah, sorry, I was like, sorry, sorry, Alex, sorry, 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 sorry. Let me put your scrunchie back <laughs> into your hair for you. I was like, you're so childish and then did an even worse thing. But anyway. <laughs> Not like you yeah. at all, Mum. No. <laughs> <laughs> so 
so very um, mature. Yeah. Is there is there anyone whose chat you're gonna miss on the pitch? Ooh. No, that's a great question. No, like the Welsh can be like awful. Like just general. Like I'm like just focus on what you're doing. Like. You know, you're using the energy in your wrong way. Like, focus on your game <laughs> rather than try and get stuck into us because it's really not working. I'm like, oh, God, <laughs> shut up. And here she is. She's retired. Everybody. The real Sarah. <laughs> like, like, oh. I'm delighted with the real Sarah on that. Please stand up. <laughs> <laughs> that was Northern in case you didn't get that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it doesn't like, work. No, it just it's just annoying. Mm. Like, it doesn't get you off your game. It just like, I'm like, oh, God, just be quiet. Go for the shoelaces. Yeah. Oh, I've given everyone the trick now. <laughs> I could just, I couldn't even I think. Sing I think things like that, though, I've got a bit of time for not undoing your shoelaces, but like the small, funny stuff, yeah. like pulling someone's shirt a little bit over their face. You something. had a good just, one once. You know, just things that are like, they're irritating, but they're totally harmless. Scaz <laughs> once, we were playing against Bristol for Litchfield. I don't know if you were playing in this game. She basically grabs Marley Packer's shirt and like pulls it over her head. So she's like trying to fight, but her arms are like trapped. And she was going mad, but she actually couldn't get anywhere. This The shirt was just over her head. She couldn't get it back down for ages. That's it was even funnier because it was her as well. She yeah. was basically scrapping herself in her <laughs> shirt. It was so good. My favourite bit of a scrap. Do you remember when we were in New Zealand and it was the third game and I think 2013? Yes. And... Um, like we we had been like we'd been whitewashed. We were we had been really poor, um, and the final game like towards the end, and there was a big scrap like 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 kicked off. And our manager Jan Man at the time like there was TV cameras, so rather than stop it, she literally just put her cam uh, her clipboard in front of the camera so no one could be sighted for it and just let it happen. Just but then the on. camera moved, and Jan Man was like. Why are you nothing to see here? Like just kept moving with the with the camera. It was it's so brilliant. good. So good. Okay. Is that is there. that is that the coach you're gonna be? Yeah. But <laughs> just let them crack crack on. They'll they'll get it out of their system. Yeah, they will do. Let It'll, them sort let them find out themselves. It'll run out. <laughs> yeah. Just let them go. It's yeah. cool. I get Mo in to teach them how to do some uh, tricks around the scrum, like pull scrunchies out. Yeah. So the big everyone keeps asking you what's next. So you obviously you're on the TV this weekend. I yeah. mean, literally not a day off. Yeah. I mean, you're not really leaving rugby in any real way. You're no. just shifting chairs. Yeah, I'm just moving somewhere else. Yeah. A sideways move. <laughs> yeah. Is there something about that that really excites you? Yeah, genuinely. Um, I think especially I'm going to go, uh, like, I've been player coach at Lightning for, what, since I joined mm. there, like, six years ago so I've always done a, a little bit as as I've gone along and I'm actually really excited to to get back into it and just spend some time like trying to get better develop myself and obviously we've got our partnership with with Northampton Saints which is really exciting and just seeing where where that goes um so whilst obviously one chapter's closed I just feel like one's almost beginning and doing bits of the the TV work is probably like quite good in terms of just seeing what other things are, are out there and but so yeah I'm, I'm really excited about about what's next and so yeah I won't be having a I won't be having any time away from rugby I think it's literally been sort of like shoehorned into me for the rest of my life I think you'll be in demand as well <laughs> have you thought about what um training or exercise <laughs> might look like because I always find that fascinating because I feel like you, you don't have to do anything no, you're not you prescribed anything anymore no Mo asked me this I was like I wonder if they could create a program for like retired life and um nathan was like you know i'm not gonna let you do nothing <laughs> so i think you like have me out running with him or something but yeah um i'm quite excited just to like do what i want when i want and not have to be like oh, i've got to go and do this program and um i've got to go and do this running session i won't miss some of the running sessions we've had to do that's for sure um you i'm know, gonna just... text you next christmas <laughs> and make you come and do it with me yeah. <laughs> i'll be like oh sorry for saying <laughs> but just you know if you're feeling like you want to go for a I run round the, the streets or down the canal or something. You can do it without going, this isn't part of my programme. I'm not allowed to do that. That's mad. That When's the last time you think you've done that? Genuinely. Can you even remember? Probably when I thought I'd... Um, randomly, when we went up to Kingston Park on uh, Team Run Day, I was like, I surely recognise that man. I don't know why. And as I went out, he came up to me and he was like, oh, I remember when you were 15 and there was 
uh, a gym where there was like lots of grounds and he was like the groundsman there. He was like, I remember when you used to come into the gym and do all your training. And this was me just going into like a little tiny gym going, what's everyone else doing? Well, they've gone on the treadmill or go on the <laughs> treadmill. Now they've gone on the rower, like literally just copied what, like they're on the machine. So I'll do a bit of this and a bit of that. I had no idea, but I feel like that's what I'm going to go and do. I'm like, oh, what do I fancy today? Like oh, a bit of bike or a bit of lap pull down, like um or so maybe good. get myself along to a class like bums and tums or something like so that good. Zumba. 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 Oh my God, zumba sarah hunter at zumba if you ever no, do that can we please. come with a film crew zumba no. so, have you seen the video of oh, the one um, 2014 no 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 not a center oh. video oh, the okay. one where the exercise class moves to the left and this poor woman moves to the right <laughs> and then they move to the right and she's moved because she's like five <laughs> seconds behind that is what Bless her soul, Sarah Hunt would that be will, like. Yeah, that'll be me. Choreography, so, is that uh, your thing? Absolutely not. My my One of my friends from school friends actually came to the game who didn't come to the hotel. <laughs> she actually has her own summer business. Does she? Yeah. Oh. Sign her up, she's an influencer waiting want, to happen. I don't even want a film crew there. I just want to be there. Yeah, I want to be in the room. Can you just put your phone on live? <laughs> <laughs> do you know how to do an Instagram live? I, I'm sure I could learn. Mo will teach me. <laughs> I, I feel like there is a show in this and we need to make yeah. it. I have got terrible rhythm. Like when, um, so we were at the ground on Saturday and Harry, our manager, was like, oh, we're leaving. She said, you don't have to come back with us. Like, I was like, no, no, I want to come back. I want to come on the bus one last time. Um, she said, no, you can get a taxi. No, I actually want it. She was like, yeah, but you've got all this other stuff to do. I was like, no, I'll... She's basically down. saying, we want to leave. Can you hurry yeah, up? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, right, I'm on it. Like, half an hour later, like, I actually get on the bus. Um, and the first caps do their song, and then they made me do a song, obviously. So I did... Um, Time of the life, you know the one on Dirty Dancing. No, how's it go? Oh, no, no, not Dirty. Yeah. <laughs> <It's laughs> so and I literally butchered it. Amy was Amy came was like, yeah, it was a great song, but it didn't really sound like <laughs> <laughs> like the tune or the timing of the actual <laughs> song. But yeah, I just went with it like proper, like free for all. Gave it everything. But yeah, timing, coordination, anything like that not got one of my favorite things you know like when everyone's clapping along on the bus or whatever even one of us would get sunshine and try and clap like get her in the river with us so we'd be like she'd be like looking at us so intently like trying to clap in time yeah, so are you good. next to the beat yeah uh, always uh, next to the beat yeah I'm totally you got like, way better though yeah but it'll only years. be for like a minute and it'll be by accident yeah <laughs> so good yeah. okay pandit hat on Italy, France was interesting because Italy was within reach there for a bit, which makes us all excited about what could happen. One or two upsets maybe on the horizon predictions. Round two, oh. Saturday, Ireland versus France in Cork. Come on. Just a who wins. Yeah, give France. us a give us a bit of punditry uh, there. Yeah. Come on. I just think unfortunately Ireland are in like a bit of a pickle. A bit of a pickle. A bit of a pickle. You know, they've got some contracts, some people playing over in England. Like, what is up with that? I don't know. Don't know. Yeah. You've got two Irish girls, you might know. Yeah. It's just tough. So they obviously have brought in these contracts and Irish rugby just want to get everyone back into Ireland to have the contracts, but I'm not sure the structure's there to be able to do it yet. And the girls have tried to put themselves in the best shot by mm. being over in England and playing in the most competitive league. Mm yet then they're now not supported so it's just it's tough like it's, i feel for them i think scotland and wales have done what they've they're letting their contract with players play in england where there's a really good league it's really competitive the players are getting better and you just wonder whether ireland might like sort of learn from it or all be a bit too late but i just think obviously it's great that they've got contracts but it just doesn't seem like it's um all tied together at this moment mm. in time which mm. i think probably showed in the performance against wales and i think Obviously, France is going to be a tough mm. prospect at any time, mm. never mind where they are at this moment in time. Yeah, just a bit more alignment required. Yeah. Scotland, Wales, 5.30, Edinburgh Rugby Stadium. Hmm. Oh, um, I think I'd like Scotland to win. I think where they are, lightning. We, yeah, we've got a lot of a lot of lightning girls in the Scottish team, and Rachel Malcolm. Like, I've got so much time and respect for her. She's such an incredible 
leader, person, and you just want them to turn the corner. You know, you look out to the World Cup and those those um, games which were lost on fine margins, you just think, I just want them to, to get over that line and get the win that has been coming and is coming. And I just don't know that back home they'll have a bit more sort of, will they have that more galvanisation between the, the new word? Is that a new word? Oh, galvanisation, I like it. I, like it. I, like I it. get mocks, don't I? Yeah. You can they'll do whatever makes want. sense. Yeah. <laughs> um, they'll be more galvanised, I think. The gravitas, the gravitas. woman. There's so much gravitas in <laughs> yeah, here. Yeah, so much gravitas. Uh, <laughs> monumentous. <laughs> monumentous. <laughs> it could be a monumentous occasion. <laughs> Tiddly dip. <laughs> See, it works. <laughs> Doesn't that work? No, I agree. Um, but yeah, I just, I, are the whales coming off? <laughs> We've lost it. I'm listening, so let's carry on. You just talk to me, girl. Where was coming off? The back of um, <laughs> their win against Ireland. Obviously, yeah. they'll be full of confidence. Um, really full of confidence. They've obviously had that year. Um, be tough for Scotland, but maybe at home. I reckon they'll have a cra- record crowd there this weekend. You're back in a Scots win. Yeah, I'm going to go with it. Nice. And Italy, they were threatening with ball in hand. Confident in phase play. I mean, the the weather towards the Horrendous. end of that game. Not awful. an Italy away trip. That. No, I know. Well, I looked at it and I was like, oh, that's the one fixture yeah. if you have it, you look forward to yeah. for a bit of oh, sunshine. Yeah. yeah. This time, however, it's at Franklin's Gardens, which is a um, great pitch to play on. Great pitch. Great yeah, pitch. really great pitch. To play and on. is going to be proper, well supported. Yeah. So we're really excited oh, about seeing England. Yeah. Grand Slam on again? Are we talking? Genuinely, I think. Um, I, New faces in, like you have. We had what two, three weeks prep, and I guess you you hope and everything clicks in training. It, it this it's been a bit disjointed at times. Like obviously people trying to get up to speed, and I just thought the performance on Saturday, like compared to how things have been going in training, was was next level. Um, and I think obviously as tournaments goes on, you you build, you get more. Um, continuity in how people are playing and you're getting some senior players back <laughs> hopefully <laughs> is that me that's you <laughs> senior experience yeah that's okay you can say senior we've rinsed you for <laughs> age also. um but like there are key players like alex matthews will be back hannah bottom will be back more Muir will be back hopefully helena Rowling will be back you know as you build towards um sort of the big big end of the tournament a big finish at twickenham and i, I genuinely think um it's certainly on the cards Fly half for the Italy game. Yeah, I think Holly will get the nod again. I think she did well. She's just such a baller. Honestly, so I was in the line in training and basically we were doing this like live contact drill and I got absolutely sat down by her. So she like gave me the eyes out the back door, <laughs> literally like wound this pass up. So I tried to make this read, like flew out, tried to make this read and she just slotted the ball into Sarah Beckett who went clean through untouched. And I was like mortified, like the only the only opportunity I had to make a tackle in that and I missed it, like didn't even miss it. It was an absolute shocker. <laughs> you weren't anywhere near it. And I said, I said to the girls after, I was like, oh, I'm fuming about that. They were like, how's that? I was like, yeah, fine but I was fuming about that and they were like oh was it Holly and I was like yeah they were like just wait a beat whenever Holly's got the ball just yeah. like stick your channel for that extra second because you just never know and it's true she's just brilliant just picks the right holes just puts people in space I love playing with her when I'm her nine okay I hope no one from Italy was watching now <laughs> yeah <laughs> but genuinely she's she's grown in confidence over she's quite a sort of a, a quiet um player and person you know but like when she speaks, like people listen, and and actually over the last couple of weeks, because there's been no Sorry Harrison around, no Helena Rowland, and she's had to step up into that role, into that leadership role, and and she's done really, really well. Um, so yeah, like I thought she played well on Saturday. She just has so much time on the ball, and her pass is like unbelievable. Like the weight of it at the right time, and the game management. So yeah, I think um like absolutely she'll get the the nod again at, at 10 so she can continue on that and we are looking forward to more punditry good to see of you no pressure <laughs> we get to listen to you all the <laughs> yeah. time what are you gonna wear I, I, this is i'm gonna have to go shopping oh, genuinely it is a stress it's it a mystery yeah I'm gonna for real life rugby but girls you look lovely like you can't wear jeans and a like jacket. How strict you is can it? wear whatever you want. You're yeah. so well, like, smart, but when you yeah. stood next to Gabby Logan, and you have to give it some. Care you don't attention. have the vanity. Oh, there she goes again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't say that. You know what I mean? That no, she always looks great. Your mate, Gabby. My point is, she always looks great. <laughs> yeah. 
I feel like I'm going to do a bit of Instagram stalking on like potential outfits. But you were going for like the denim and the puffer on the weekend. You were going quite yeah, I luxe. Wasn't, like, because I wasn't luxe. really there. As, oh, not there. Yeah, it was like I was there as a fan. You weren't standing next to Gabs. So. Yeah. Um, do you think I should have made more effort? No, no, no I loved it. I, I love the blue. The, no, the blue and your hair and your eyes, and everything worked yeah. really nicely. Brings up my eyes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the Scouts was going to have a slightly different outfit on Saturday. Oh, here yeah. we go. Yeah. Come on, give us the outfit story. Because I loved that you had the coat very nonchalantly unbuttoned and it looked minus 40. I was freezing. Why did you not it button it? It wasn't that cold. It was a possibly warm day in the North East. <laughs> Balmy. <laughs> all, the girl, all the girls were like, I think I'm going to have to wear my thermal. I'm like, what? I'm like, this is a warm day in Newcastle. You do not need to wear a thermal. <laughs> Tell me about your outfit. So basically, I'd driven us to the game, Mo and I, and then we were walking, car park, muddy as hell, fresh white sneaks on. That was a separate nightmare. But anyway, walking to the, obviously I'm crutching, got my rucksack on, Mo's very kindly carrying my coat and my uh jacket blazer keep going chat some people along the way keep going keep going all of a sudden blazer falls onto the ground she scoops it up immediately oh it's fine it's fine, it's fine. throws it back over anyway i didn't think much of it didn't want to cause a scene Summertime. got up to where we were doing like our prep bit and stuff mo disappears to do her denim jacket and puffer coat jobs and then i'll go <laughs> to put <laughs> did that just happen this just escalated <laughs> It may be sounding funnier in your head. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> um, then I go to put my blazer on before we come down to the presentation point. And the whole one side is muddy. And so I can't wear it. So I'm a layer down. When she says layer, it was very thin. But I did feel so, so bad. I offered her my denim jacket and she said no. <laughs> so there we are. <laughs> Can't be wearing denim next to her mate Gaz. There we are then. Guys, now I've got a complex like I should have. No. No, because you were floating. You were floating. What about. was that word? You Condor. Candor. Damn it. Condor. Candor. Because in Condor, you're a giant like... bird. <laughs> 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 Anywho. Okay. Um, well, we're looking forward to see what both of you wear. Can we please get a Today I'm Wearing post with tags <laughs> yeah. and the whole story? I, mean, I haven't got anything to post about now on Instagram because I'm not playing rugby. I'm like, what did non-rugby players post about? You can post about me. Okay, I'll post about you. Yeah. You can post, you know, photos with your mates uh, to <laughs> yeah. wish them well and tag them in it. And lock <laughs> Basically, what you would write in the card, just give it to the rest of us so okay. we can see as well. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Well wishes ah. from Sarah Hunter. Sarah Hunter. <laughs> Okay, well, Red Rose, number 137. Sarah Hunter, thank you. <laughs> thank you for having me on. It's been the most fun. Oh, can I ask one question before we go? Yes. What's your favourite ever off-field story? Oh, God. What, what do you feel? Off-field story? No, in in the whole history of the Red Rose 137. Oh. Mo, this is Sarah Hunter. You need to give about two weeks' notice oh, for yeah. this. yeah. You do need to give me, like, two weeks' notice. All right, don't worry. Why well, have you got one? No. Oh. She's got one, she's burning. No, no, no. I like the no. fact that we can make you jump. Damn it. No. <laughs> so she's not the one for the Madver. No. Do what? You're not Stuart Hogg. <laughs> can make a jump. <laughs> <laughs> I liked um, 2014 when you went captain's call with Katie and we all had to stay up. Yeah. And then you ended up in the pool. That was fun. That was yeah, fun. I know. The I'm World just Cup move trophy. On real quick. The World Cup trophy was on the bottom of the floor. Everyone's like, where's the World Cup? And I went, like, oh, I'm not sure. And then it was literally on the floor of the swimming pool. <laughs> you chucked it in the water. No, we we, we in had it in the water with us. And I think yeah. we were like, we, we were, we Katie thought up, Suns like, was holding it. Suns thought Katie was holding it. And then it was on the floor. Yeah. So good. It's gone a bit out of fashion nowadays, Captain's Call. It's gone isn't it? completely out of court. We I know, tried we used to have it. a Captain's Call like last night things. Basically, no one goes to bed until the captain goes to bed. <gasps> and normally, the captains traditionally are relatively hardcore and therefore stay out. But we did it to be fair when we got back from the World Cup at Cabbage Patch. Yeah, we did. But then some of the kids did try and get out. I was literally blocking the door. I was like, you're not going. <laughs> I was like, it's not where I was. I think it was only like one o'clock or something. I was like, you're only. not going. And the clocks hadn't gone back. And the so. clocks hadn't gone back. <laughs> and then they were like, no. I was like, you're not going. And they were like, these, I think some of them <laughs> snuck out the back way. So that's why Saturday night ended up a 3.30 job. Because it was Captain's <laughs> call and Sarah Hunter yeah. decided, I'm not letting anyone leave. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you are welcome on our couch whenever you feel like oh, it. Thanks, guys. Please stop by again. Yeah. I'm it's sure good to have you. Thank you. Um, I don't know if we're going to see you for a few weeks now. Yeah. 
<gasps> Hopefully not in the nicest possible way. In the nicest yeah. possible way. Mm. We're going to miss you monumentously. <laughs> that, that, that is why you're best in the biz, that outstanding. <laughs> Needs to become a hashtag. <laughs> yes, I slapped oh. my thigh. Carry on. <laughs> that Honestly, was me. My, Do um, the pip. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, my cheeks are hurting so much. <laughs> And uh, we are probably still going to be sitting here giggling for the next 20 minutes, but I think this is probably where we should leave it. The good news <laughs> is that Skaz and I will be here every week with the kid, the Skaz and the Rugby, brought to you by Vodafone. Uh, and we'd love to have you along for the ride. And maybe we'll, you know, see you in Cardiff. Um, the Good, the Skaz and the Rugby is a Folding Pocket production produced by Shara Kilgallen.